there is a lot of benefit of taking the yellow sap. First, you get it is very good against addictions. It is very good against many condition. It has healing power. You can be healed. It destroy power of the devils. Demons become weak, and it it remove it destroy the power of the devil, because the this is something about um when I came to the point when I would be discussing about demons in so much because I have been learning a lot about demons by the Holy Spirit. I'm learning about it things about demons every day. And I've been learning a lot. I started to learn a lot when uh, the angels were starting to deliver me. I I came into a lot of knowledge about uh, demons. So, but it, the Lord's Supper is very good against it and the evil spirit mm, is very, very, very effective and very powerful. So I just say, take it the way I am showing you how I make and how I'm taking it. Because it is going to help you to, to be free, to be set free in many, many, many Thing, especially when you are you are suffering from addictions, but remember to take it correctly. Find what is meaning correctly. This is something about correctly means that you shall before you take you you, you because when you have fornicated, when you have performed the adult because even the Bible says that the adulterers and the fornicators shall not be allowed to take Lord's Supper together with you. They are not allowed they shall not be allowed to take the Lord's Supper together with you. So it's very important to think that I mean to 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 make sure that you are ritually clean before you take Lord's Supper. How do you make sure that you become you are ritual clean? How to make sure that your ritual clean is by confessing your sins. That's the only way. That's the only way. But confess your sin. You know, to confess, do you know the meaning of confessing? Confessing means that you speak about the sins you have done. You tell God, God, I have done this and I am deeply sorry. Deeply sorry. It's not about, uh, Lord, I repent my sins, and then you go back to the sin. I repent my sins, and then you go back to the sin. And then it becomes like a song, like um, it becomes like a song, because at that time, God will start to ignore you. God understands that you are, we are weak. And sometimes we can be weak, even if after we have repented, you come to the point, because of the weakness, you can stumble. You stumble because of the weakness. I am not telling you that you shall go to sin because you are weak. You must learn to crucify your body. But this is how you become ritual clean. To be honest, you should avoid sin at any cost. It can happen, you see. I cannot say that it since when I was born again, I cannot say that I have never, 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 never made some mistakes. I have been stumbled somewhere, somewhere in speaking, in talking. In, but it means that it shall not be by purpose. And it shall not be like you are doing... <laughs> You can come to the point, you can be doing, because God is very merciful, and he is forgiving, and he knows that you are weak. When you come into the point, you, your weakness will become, but you shall not just do it because you feel like you are just going and standing yourself into sin. Like you just let it go, you know, you just live like the sinner's people. The Bible is warning us that the people who are living in sin shall be cast out of the church. Why do you think the Bible is, is, is warning us that? It is because 
the, the, the blood of Jesus. Even if you have been, the blood of Jesus shall not, even if it has been given for free, that does not mean that it is so cheap. It has been given for free, but it is a very expensive blood, the most expensive blood. Even if, you know, remember if someone give you a golden chain today, or a golden ring, or anything, it is expensive. Even if you got it for free, do you understand them? Eh? You cannot just say, I just throw it, because it, you know, it is not worth for me because it is free. It is expensive. Understand? Even if you go it for free. So even if for Jesus, even if he gave us our blood, his blood to us, that does not mean that that blood is so cheap that we shall just use it in the incorrect manner. That's the reason that some people, we are told that some people are sick and the people, some people are dead. Um, Christians, we shall learn to 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 put ourselves. I guess if as a Christian, you shall just you learn to crucify your body for the for the sake of the cross. Jesus was crucified for us. We should crucify ourselves for Him. If you understand this, this will be the love. You understand eh? love. Because he crucified himself, for, he was crucified for us. We also must crucify for him. He was crucified so we can see how much he wants us to heaven. We can see that he really wants us to heaven. But this crucifixion will have the power in us if we also take it seriously and crucify ourselves for him. And then we meet in the middle. So when Jesus was crucified, he was also negotiating with us. He was talking to us. He was telling us, I love you too much that I do not want you to perish. I want you also to crucify the same way. People think that because Jesus was crucified, we can continue to live in sin because he has taken all the sins. Then we can live freely here. We can do whatever we want and go to heaven. Just forget about that. It was not that. He means that he himself said, if you cannot know, if no one, if somebody cannot crucify themselves and follow me, they do not deserve me. They do not deserve to be my disciples. So we all must learn how to crucify ourselves. We must deny ourselves. You know, to, do you remember? Do you know the meaning of denying yourself? Deny. It's not about priding. It's not about think, putting yourself into the center. It's me, 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 me. No, it is not about that. It is about humbling ourselves. Think, say that, Lord, I do not deserve this. Lord, thank you. I did not deserve this. Thank you, Lord. I am a sinner. It's not about I am okay. We can see some people who actually, they found themselves kept captive by the devil. And they, when they, they realize that, and they know that they are sinning, but they are actually not sinning because they want. And these are the people that Jesus need so much, the people who deserve salvation, because these people, they need, they deserve mercy, because they know themselves that they are weak, and they are sinners, and they are trying to be as good as possible. You see that, you can see some people, say, when those people who say that, I was homosexual, but then Jesus showed me, it, it, it showed himself to me, and he told me, uh, you know, he loved me. It's not because Jesus loved people who are sinning, but it is because of that feelings they have inside, that is all feeling like, oh Lord, I am a sinner. I, what can I do to deserve? When you see them talk, you understand that these people, they have really humbled themselves 
you see that even if they feel like I really desire to come to Christ, but I feel like this sin is binding me and I cannot. So even if they are going, even in the time of sinning, but they still desire to live the life of holiness, but it is like you push yourself outside, even if you are doing it, but unwillingly. It is not about I am proud to be who I am. It is not about that. It is not about saying that like other people when they mock the body of the Christ. It's not about that. But Jesus wants people who have pain and regret and really they desire to come to him. Even if they feel that they have been kept. There's something that has bound them that they cannot get out of it. Sometimes we say that when we tell people about their sins, it's not because we hate them, but because we love them. And we know this is how it works. We know that when someone feels guilty, when someone is in pain, this is how they receive mercy. When someone is starting to feel like, I don't want it anymore, this is how the mercy is being born. But if the so we tell them the, the only way to do it is to tell them right away that you are sinning. You are a sinner. So that when they listen to it, it makes them feel bad. And this is how they receive mercy. Like when you paint them and you tell them, well, you know what? You just yes, deserve it. You are who you are. Just yes, be who you are. Welcome to our church because you are who you are. There is a room for everyone. Hey, love is love. We are not telling them that because we know that by doing that, we are destroying them. In the long run, we destroy the whole flock because those people, they are not people who are sinning, proudly sinning. They are not even needed in the flock of, um, in, the, in, the, in, the, yeah, in the church. They are not even needed. You understand? The Bible is saying it very clear that the people who are living in sin, they shall not be allowed to enter into the church. They shall not, there shall not be any sinners in, in, among you. Or otherwise, you are participating their sins. 